How are you, Tony? This is Stephen Ray Clay. I want to make a quick video about the Nancy Maud Indian tribe who's applied for federal recognition. And I want to read to you some of the information that they uh, provided the, uh, the Senate on the reason why they're applying for recognition and why they were reclassified as people of color. And as you can see, these are some of the members of the Nancy Maud tribe and they're a little lighter than most of our people who are looking for their tribal members. And these people here uh, recently got federal recognition in, last year in 2018. So it says the Nassimata, a Native American tribe recognized by the Commonwealth of Virginia, along with 10 other Virginia Indian tribes on January the 12th, 2018, they signed federal recognition through the passage of the uh, Tama, Tamasini E. Jordan Indian Tribes of Virginia Federal Recognition Act of 2017, which included recognition of five other tribes. Most of the members of the tribe live in Suffolk, Chesapeake, Virginia area, along with southern borders of the state. At the time of European encounter, the historic Nassau tribe spoke one of the Algonquin languages. The Nassimod the Nassimod the members of the Powahat the Nassimod were members of the Powahatan chieftain which was a loose confederacy of about 30 tribes estimated to have numbered more than 20,000 people in the coastal area or what became Virginia, they lived along the Nassimod River area they called Chuckatuck. In 1607, the English people arrived to settle Jamestown and Nassimod were initially wary. In 1608, the English raided one of the Nassimod towns, burning houses and destroying canoes to force the people to give corn to settlers. Captain John Smith and his men demanded 400 bushels of corn or threatened to destroy the village, remaining canoes and houses. The tribe agreed and Smith and his men left. With most of the tribe's corn supply, they returned the following month for the rest, which left the tribe in bad shape for the winter. Relations between the English and the Nassimod deteriorated further in 1609 when the English tried to gain control of Dumpling Island, where the head chief lived and where the tribe's temples and sacred items were kept. The English destroyed the burial sites of tribal leaders and temples houses and religious sites were ransacked for valuables such as pearls and copper ornaments which were burned with the bodies of leaders by 1630s by the 1630s the English began to move into Nancy Ma land with mixed reactions and these are members of the Nancy Ma tribe of the 1900s this is what they look like. This is a family, evidently. John Bassey, an earlier settler in Virginia, married Elizabeth, the daughter of King of the Nassau Nation. Uh, she was baptized uh, into the Angelica Church, Angelican Church, and they married on August the 14th, 1638. Bass was born the 7th of September, 1616, and died 1699. They had eight children, Elizabeth, John, Jordan, Kizzy, Nathan, uh, Nathaniel, Richard, Samuel, and William. They became related to the Copen, the Copedi, uh, the Coperidge family through intermarriage. Uh, some Nancy Park claim descended from this marriage. Based on her research, Dr. Helen Roundtree says that all current Nassimod descends from this marriage. 
making the tribe a family affair. So it looks like all the members of the tribe descended from this marriage. The photo on the left shows uh, members of the Weaver and Bass family. Uh, and then they have William Weaver sitting down. Augustus Bass is standing behind him. And then the Weaver family were endangered East Indians from modern day India and Pakistan. So uh, these people are from Pakistan and East India. And they petitioned the federal government to form a tribe. And they stated that they were free, who were free in Lancaster County about 1710. And about 1732, they were taxable. Note, free blacks, generally free people of color and Indians, had to pay taxes in Virginia and North Carolina in Norfolk County and taxable mulattoes, landowners in nearby Hartford County, North Carolina, by 1741. So now they claiming that they were free people of color. That's what these people are claiming, that they are free people of color. Now I'm going to go on to read, today the Nancy Mod have about 200 tribal members. As a citizen tribe, they gained recognition by Virginia in 1984. The disruption of wars and loss of records in Virginia made it difficult for them to provide the extensive documentation and proof of historical continual continuity with continuity needed to gain federal recognition in the 20th century. The current chief is Barry Barry Big Buck Bass. Now, my family is related to the Bass family, and that's why I have this article, because it showed up in one of my trees. They hold monthly tribal meetings at the Indiana Methodist, United Methodist Church, which was founded in 1850 as a mission of the NASMA. The tribe co-hosts an annual powwow in June in Chesapeake and has an annual powwow every year in August. The tribe has also operated a museum and gift shop, the Matanock, the Matanock. The Nassapod are one of the few state recognized tribes in Virginia that have not purchased land for their tribe, but they are trying to get the city of Suffolk to give up 100 acres of an 1,100 acre riverfront park. They want to use this land to, rec to reconstruct the Matanock, a town of their ancestors. Well, the ancestors, they say, came from India. Uh, they plan to, to, attack, to attract tourism by demonstrating their heritage. The tribe has enlisted the help of Helen C. Roundtree, whose research helped identify the Matanock town's location. The village would would use archaeological and other resource other research to ensure the structures such as long houses to be built on the site had the proper historical dimensions. They had been trying to obtain the area for more than ten years as a place to put a cultural center. The Matanock Village Tribal Office of Power Grounds and other meeting place. The Suffolk Task Force on the project, made up mostly of non-Indians, has supported giving the site to the Nancy, to the Nancy Mod. Suffolk's mayor, E. Dana Dickens III, has publicly supported this project as well. She said of the proposal, museum and village, it certainly can be a big part, part of Suffolk's tourism. The tribe has had to supply detailed plans for the project. So now these people are asking for for land and they want to build a, a complex so they can have a powwow and they say that they descend from free people of color. But they also stated that they are from India. And they had to draw plans and they had to have uh, include drawings. 
They have also had to submit documentation to the Madanock Town Task Force that explains the type of nonprofit foundation that will be created once the deed to the land is given to the tribe. In November 2010, the Suffolk County Council City Council agrees to transfer the land back to the Nassimah. In June of 2011, everything stalled as a result of concerns the tribe had with the proposed development agreement sent by the city to the, count, to the tribal association in December. As a result, the project had been delayed and remains in legal limbo. In August 2013, the city of Suffolk transferred Nassimah ancestral lands back to the tribe, and in November 2013, members of the Nassimah tribe gathered at the site of Matanak town and, based, and blessed the land. So now they're asking for the recognition here. The Nassimah and other Virginia tribes had not been recognized, had not been recorded federal recognition or uh, courted federal recognition by the U.S. government until 2018. The bill to recognize six tribes was introduced into both houses of Congress. It covers the following Chickahominy Indian Tribe, Eastern Chickahominy Indian Tribe, the Upper Meta Pony Tribe, and the, the Rappahannock Tribe. Uh, Inc. and the Monacan uh, Indian Nation. The Nassimah Indian Tribe in 2009 supporters began propose again proposed the the, the Tomasini E. Jordan Indian Tribe of Virginia Federal Recognition Act. So by June of 2009 the bill passed passed the House Committee on Natural Resources and the U.S. House Representatives. A comparison bill was sent to the Senate the date after the bill was voted on in the House. The bill was sent to the Senate's Committee on Indian Affairs. Then on June, on October 22, 2009, the bill was approved by the Senate Committee and on December 23 was on the Senate's legislative calendar. The bill had a hold placed on the judicial concern place for judicial concerns by Senator Tom Coburn, a Republican of Oklahoma, who urges they apply through the who who, who urged they apply through the BIA. Okay, but Virginia tribe had lost valuable documentation because the state's passage on racial integrity Act of 1924 requiring classification of all residents as white or black colored. It implemented by Walt, it was as implemented by Walter Plecker. The first registrar 1912 to 1946 of the of the then newly created Virginia Bureau of Vital Statistics Records. Uh, many Virginia-born tribal members were changed from Indian to colored because he decided some family were mixed race and was imposing the one-drop rule. After more than after more delays, the bill was finally passed on January 2018. The six tribes in Virginia gained federal recognition. So now they stating that. Their family descended from free people of color, and Walter Plecker changed their identity. They want to apply for federal recognition, and they use net as the grounds. Now, the Senate asked that they provide documentation that they descend from this tribe. They have no documentation, but yet and still, they were approved. And the 100 acres that they requested was granted to them. And that, that's the end of this document. But that is something that just got me that they can come in and request to be recognized without documentation and stated that they're not from this country, that they came from another continent, from another country, they came from India, and they want to be recognized as a tribe. Now, our people was already here, and we cannot get recognized as a tribe. 
But I'm part of a tribe now, but when I was looking for this information, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people looking for the same information because they have families that descend from a lot of these tribes, especially in Virginia, and the government is refusing to give them recognition. But because these people are saying that they're going to bring tourists to the to the uh, area and make money for the state, they were approved. That just, it's just not right. So I don't know what else to say about it other than, you know, it's just, there's no justice in this doggone country. So this is the, this system, these are the members. And I'm going to zoom in close so you can see the members. I'm using my cell phone here, but if you can see these people here, they don't look like, and you can't go off of looks in a way, because they say that, well, actually you can, because when they stated that they came from another country, that means that they're not Americans. They're not from this doggone land. And they're playing, the, and in, in Virginia, they didn't wear the Plains Indians war bonnets on their head, as these folks are wearing here. And as you can see, most of them are, actually not most of them, all of them are Europeans. Just laying it out there, they are actually Europeans applying for federal recognition and they were approved because they're going to bring in tourists and, and tourist dollars to the state. That's basically what it is. Now, what you think about that? It's a hot mess. All right. This is all I have to say about this. I'm going to end this video. Stephen Red Clay, thanks for watching.